We are going up in space in flying saucers to battle it out in the infinite darkness. This here is, well, flying saucers. So this is a game where you control your own little squad of saucers flying around trying to take out your opponent. This game here is coming to Kickstarter quite soon. And this here is a prototype. It's a well-made prototype, but what you see in this video might not be the finished product. There might be some changes, but this will give you a good idea about how the game works. I will show you how to set it up. I will also show you how the different saucers work and what you can do in the game. But the gameplay itself comes in quite many different ways. I mean, there's a bunch of scenarios in here, there's a bunch of different ways to play it. So all of that you need to figure out by yourself. But I'm gonna show you how to take your little squad of saucers and fly out into the infinite universe of darkness. So let's just take a look at this. We start by putting the big black board in the center of the table for the players to easy reach. Then each player takes a control panel in a color that they would like to portray as. But you only need this player board if you play with any of these ships, otherwise you can just ignore this. We need to take the energy counter and in some scenarios, or if you want to limit the amount of turns in the game, also the turn counter. So once we have all our components in front of us, it's time to place them out on the board. But we don't want our opponents to know how we place them out. That's why we put this screen in between us. In this way, we can put out our little squad of UFOs or flying sorcerers on our side of the board. Once we're done, we remove the screen. So now we have set up our little squads of UFOs and we are ready to go out to battle. But before we do that, we need to know what the different symbols on these little flying saucers actually mean. In this game you have quite a few different types of flying saucers. We got the small intruders, we got the little bit bigger, the hunters, we got the defenders over here, we have the fighters up here, these over here are strikers, and down here we have a big generator. The generator is the one that will supply all of the other sorcerers with energy. Which means that if this one is defeated, the other ones will be defeated as well, because they will not get any more energy from the generator. Each of these sorcerers are double sided. We have one side with the active side. This is the brighter side of the UFOs. And then we have the other side, which is the deactivated side. And as you can see, this is a darker side. These flying sorcerers will become deactivated once they are taken out by the enemies, or if the generator becomes deactivated as well. But I will tell you more about that in a bit. On the sorcerers themselves, we can see some symbols. Meaning these white lines here in the edge of the sorcerer, but also these little dots in the center. And those are more than just artwork. The stripes that you see here that are on the edge of the sorcerer, these are the power value of this flying sorcerer. And in the center, the little dots represents the speed of this flying saucer, meaning the amount of squares that they can move out on the board. So during a player's turn, they can move one or several of these little flying saucers here. It's all depending on how much energy we have in the level or scenario that we are playing. In this case here, we have an energy level of six, meaning that we can use up six energies before we need to stop moving. As I showed you before, each of these little saucers here has an energy cost on the sides of their UFO. Meaning that this big bad boy here would cost you five energies to move. Meaning that if you move this, you would only have one energy left after that to move any of your other sources if you would like to, because you do not need to use all your energy. But let me give you an example. So if we would like to move this defender here, for example, it would cost us two energy. 
as it has two lines on the edge of the saucer. In the center we can see the amount of steps that it can move. In this case two, because there's two white dots. These saucers can move in any direction, even diagonal. But it cannot stop within one square from another of your saucers. But it may move through the square that is next to your saucers, it's just that it cannot stop there. So you cannot be adjacent to one of your active saucers, but you can be adjacent to one of your inactive saucers, as their energy is shut down and there is no energy field active at the moment. And once we have moved the amount of steps we want to move, we need to withdraw the amount that that saucer costs us. So now we have four more energies left. And now you can use the energy that you have left to move any of your other saucers out on the board. When you have used up all of your energy, well, your movement stops. But now we need to see if we have any battles. So once we have done our movements, it's time to check the board to see if we have any active battles going on. And an active battle will happen if you stop your movements adjacent to one of your opponent's flying saucers. So you cannot stop adjacent to your own saucers, but you can stop adjacent to your opponent's saucers. And this is actually the way you will start a battle. Now you need to count your energy and combine it to take out the opponent. Here we have two plus one plus two energies, giving us a total of five. Our opponent only have four, meaning that they will become deactivated. But we will not remove them from the board, they stay where they are. Sometimes several battles can occur at the same time during your turn. In that case you simply just resolve the first battle and then you go on resolving the second one. In a game of three or four players, one player could actually place their sorcerers in the right direction and combination so they can take out several of the other player's sorcerers at once. But one player can never join forces with another player to take out a third player. You are all on your own, man. If you end up in a situation where you have the same amount of energy as your opponent, well then you, as the attacker, are actually neutralized. Because, well, you have already used up some of your energy to fly over here and attack. And you become deactivated. When you manage to take out your opponent's generator, well then you win the game. But you can also play another variant, where you collect victory points from the saucers that you have deactivated. Meaning that if you manage to deactivate this small one right here, you would get two victory points. And then you would write those victory points down for an end of game scoring. So what I showed you here is really the basic game, where you just go out and battle it out against your opponent. But there is a second level here. This is where we bring in mining into the game. Now there will be asteroids out on the board and your job is to mine those asteroids while battling the other players. And now there will also be new flying saucers in the game. So in this version here, we now have asteroids out on the board. And some of them has mineral ore on them. All of these asteroids can have mineral ore. And some of these can even have several on one asteroids. But there can only be one per square. And we all know that if you find precious metal in space, well, of course you start to mine it, right? And that's exactly what we're gonna do now. But to mine, we will need some new saucers. The first ship I want to show you here from the level two is not a miner. This here is a hunter. And if you paid attention, you have actually already seen this in the basic game I showed you before, because this here can be used there as well. As you can see, it has a lot more speed than the others, but the energy is actually quite low, if you compare it to this one here, for example. The next one is a bomber. This one takes up four squares, so it's quite big. 
It has four energies, and as you can see, it has a speed of two, which is not that much. But on the other hand, it got two energy salvos that it can launch and shoot away from its ship. When you launch one of these energy salvos, it can be launched on any of the adjacent squares around the parent. And it can move up to four steps. Once you have fired it, it behaves just like an ordinary saucer. These energy salvos can really be handy if you want to take out some of the bigger opponent saucers. Like in this case here, we have three plus one energy, which would not be enough. But this bomber here sends out its energy salvo, and now all of a sudden you have five instead of four. Which means that you manage to take out and deactivate this saucer. But just be aware, because your opponents can actually also take out your energy salvos. And these are removed from the board. In this game, you can have two bombers. And if you look at the symbols here, you can see the symbols of that bomber's energy salvos. So you don't mix them up. You can also choose to sacrifice your own energy salvo to take out any of your opponent's salvos. In this case here, the red player sends out their salvo to take out two of the opponent's salvos as well. In this case, all three of them are gone. And you can use these salvos to take out asteroids. But then you would need to have one energy salvo on each square covering up the asteroid completely. Then you remove it from the board at the end of your turn. The next one we have is the Overhaul. Now this one here is special because this one can actually reactivate a deactivated flying saucer. It will do that by simply coming up adjacent to the deactivating saucer. Then you would need to use one fuse tokens. Now during your turn when you reactivate the deactivating flying saucer, this overhauler cannot move. It can only move during the turn and then the next turn it can choose to reactivate. Now when you activate the deactivated saucer, this one would need to move away one step right away. Since an active saucer cannot be next to another active saucer at the same time. And now we would need to remove one fuse from our control panel that belongs to the overhauler we have just used. Since this is a prototype, I do not have any of these tokens. So you will just have to imagine that I remove one token right now. A bomber cannot move and fire one of these energy salvos during the same turn. They need to choose either to fire a salvo or to move. If your overhauler has a fuse on it, but it becomes neutralized. One of your opponents can actually steal that fuse from your overhauler and place it on their control panel instead. To do this, your opponent would need to come up to a square that is adjacent to your neutralized overhauler. And in the next turn, that fuse would go from your board to the opponents. Another cool thing about these overhaulers is that they can actually push or pull other neutralized flying saucers of any color. They would do this by in one turn approaching the other flying saucer and then stand adjacent to it. And in the next turn they can then choose to push that saucer away. Or if they want to, pull it. The next ones are the quarries. These are made for mining asteroids and extracting the ore. And the way they works are that in one turn they would move up adjacent to the asteroid. In the next turn this is where they would get the ore from the asteroid. And in the third turn they can then move away and carry the ore. These queries can actually participate in combat while carrying the ore at the same time. And they can actually also deliver the ore to another query, as long as they are standing one square apart. The next one we're going to look at is the carrier, which is a transport ship. And it can transport up to four of the smaller ships. When they transport, they need to be inactive, as they are not in use when they are docked to the carrier. 
The carrier has quite a lot of movements, but not that much shield, but it can still be used in battle. When you place the carrier, it's important that it is within these four squares, so you don't put it on the sides. It needs to be firmly within the squares. It is considered to cover nine squares, three on each side. Once you have moved your carrier, you are allowed to spin it around 90 or 180 degrees. In this way, you can position the saucers that you are carrying in to get them just where you want to. Just remember that there needs to be at least one free space to be able to actually launch your flying saucer. And you can only detach from a carrier diagonally. When you attach one of your flying saucers to your carrier, they need to be flipped to the neutral side, but they also need to be attached from a diagonal square. They cannot be attached from the sides. There are no limits to how many spaceships you can detach or attach to the carrier during one turn. If the carrier should become neutralized, meaning deactivated by an enemy during their turn, any ships that are connected to the carrier will not be able to get loose, because now there is no power in the carrier or the ships. But an O2 here can actually come up to the sides of one of the flying saucers that are trapped in the carrier and activate them, meaning that now they will come out on a diagonal square. The last flying saucer I want to show you is the mill. The mill is the saucer that will process all the metal ore that you have gathered. Now, to be able to transfer the ore from your quarries to your mill, you simply need to fly up to the mill, leave one space in between, and then transfer the ore to the mill. Now, the ore doesn't actually end up on your flying saucers. These will go to your control board. This here is your mill, and this here will be your storage where you store your metal ore. And you can transfer several of these ores during one turn. Now, depending on which scenarios you're playing or which objectives you have, these games will of course end in completely different ways. But now you have the mining, you also have combat, and if you are multiple players in here, there is a lot of things that can happen out on the board. And that is how you play flying saucers. Now, like I told you, this here is just how you actually maneuver the flying saucers. But the game itself is so much more. There's so many scenarios. There's so many outcomes in how the game can be played. There's so much to do in here. And this is really a highly strategic game if you want to get into battle and battle it out against your friends. There you have it my friend, that was Flying Saucers, an intergalactic battle where you fly out with your little saucers here, trying to take over your enemy saucers and win the game. Among others, I mean there's so much more in here, there's so many more scenarios. If you want to know more about the game, well check out the links down in the description. It will be out on Kickstarter the 20th of February 2024. If you like my videos, well, why don't give me a little thumb up? Maybe you want to subscribe to the channel. It's all good if you want to, but most importantly, my friend, please remember to keep on spreading that board gaming love I know you all have. Peace out.